up YouTubers and cowboy fans? Is that VA Dallas Cowboy fan coming back at you? Uh, thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting down below. I do these videos for me and you. And they're a bit therapeutic, you know? Especially after you have a Thanksgiving like we all had. Are you freaking kidding me? I'm sorry. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you must not be a cowboy fan. I spent the Thanksgiving with my family, most of whom are Pittsburgh Steelers fans. And do you know how upsetting it is to be a cowboy fan watching the Thanksgiving game that could have actually went our way if stuff went right to being completely embarrassed people jumping around pointing at us mocking us I mean it when you got the Buffalo Bills guys running around I mean when it goes to spoils they sitting around doing the Dak dance and everything on the sidelines they're telling reporters that's why you don't pay Dak Prescott you know they rubbing it in and they got the right to because we played like doo-doo basically and when you play like doo-doo even the Buffalo Bills can sit up here and talk smack you know I mean what the heck man it's like for one drive to start the game y'all did everything right and then y'all shut it down <laughs> you know y'all listen to the fans for one drive and okay we're done with your input we're just going to stink up the joint again from now on like it makes no sense it's mind-boggling how these cowboys play <laughs> i mean i guess the whole thing sums up to brett maher brett maher is the typical cowboy oh long distance you know long term He's great. He's great. He got him. But up close, in the now, can't hit him. Can't trust him. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, the game was not the worst we've ever done, but it was atrocious. You got Connor Williams is now done for the season with a torn ACL. I'm not sure if it's the same or a different knee than he just had the surgery on already. And immediately coming into the game, uh, Xavier Solofilo gives up the freaking pressure on Dak who got the, fump, the fumble and then they scored. I mean, <laughs> what the hell? How do you come into the game and not be prepared at all for that? It makes no sense. And it's not like the guy did anything. He just bum rushed him. Just, it's just straight bull rush straight back into Dak's pocket and he could never recover. And that was pretty much microcosm of the game, you know? Sad. Dak made very inaccurate throws. I mean, the guy tried to put too much on himself. I see that. Um,. Zeke was running. They were actually doing great running the ball for once. Screens, having the T formation with Pollard and Zeke out there. And then you go and flub it up and go right back to the same old bull that you always do. I don't know what it is about our, excuse me, our coaching staff. They like to think outside of the box for two seconds and then they go right back into the same crap. <laughs> you know, my God. Uh, I mean, you darn near getting Amari's knees killed. He's getting he helmets to the knees and flipped over and stuff. You get you got Tavon Austin on the daggone field trying to make plays, and then you darn near overthrowing him. You know he's not six over six foot tall. Why are you throwing the ball high? He can't high point the ball. I don't know why are you doing that. When? Why is he out there right now? If he gives you five yards, great, but. This guy is starting to drop balls left and right, too. He's not helping. The only time you're targeting Jarwin, they're blanket covering him. Uh, it's ridiculous. Sean Lee is looking 
old and out of place. He's not making tackles. They're running right through his arm tackles. Uh, our corners are still getting beat. I don't know how the hell Jordan Lewis is getting beat by Cole Beasley play after play after play. It's like he's trying, but for some reason he's not keeping up with him. And it's you've been on the team with the guy for a couple years, and yet you act like you've never played against him before. <sighs> Special teams can't kick a field goal to save their lives. Uh, I mean, one was kind of blocked. Yeah. Guy got a hand on it, knocked it off target, but the way that ball was going, he was going to dunk it off the freaking upright anyway. So it didn't even matter. Uh, yeah, it's atrocious, you know. You don't want to lose to get rid of Garrett, but you don't want to win to keep Garrett either. So you lose, lose. I mean, it's great if we got to win, but we shouldn't be surprised if we lose, you know. And that's why, you know, everybody was jumping around in my face and, you know, talking crap about the game. And my wife just sat there, well, how do you feel about the game? I told her straight up, I honestly don't care. <laughs> you know, that's my season right now. I don't care. Anything less than the Super Bowl appearance, I don't care what we do. <laughs> you know, because if we win, that's great. We did all right and stuff fell our way for one game. If we lose, that's more indicative to what I'm feeling that we're doing right now. I expect losing nowadays because we're not trying to win. I mean, it's so obvious when you're going down the field, you know you want to put up a touchdown and get seven points, and yet you're still playing it god-awful, safe, conservative. You need to score, and you're throwing, you need to, get a first down and you're going these five yard routes, four yard routes a quick little screen that goes nowhere running straight into a brick wall I mean you knew Mark Maher was not going to be able to kick half these field goals in his own house which is dumb and yet you're still trotting him out there and acting like it's confident as hell to do it when it's not <laughs> but you won't get rid of him you won't change your play calling to score instead of freaking settling for three all the time I mean what are y'all doing it makes no sense I, as Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones you got to be sitting somewhere just dying inside knowing you can't make a head coach and change right now because it wouldn't make a difference I mean Jason Garrett still has the pulse of the team but they say you are your coach your players start to take on the personality of your coach. And you've been conservative for a decade. Your players are starting to act like that. Uh, Zeke and them, they've almost been here five years and already they're starting to act like it. They're lackadaisical. Everybody gives speeches just like him. Their press conferences are just like him. <laughs> you know, you have no fire, no passion. You don't get up for games. And the only people who are making noise on this team are the guys you traded for are free agents. And I'm starting to see that these guys have a voice because they haven't been here. They have no idea how these coaches are in the offseason because they weren't here for the offseason program. It's like they haven't been brainwashed yet, and that's why they're pissed off. <laughs> I mean, people who came to Dallas saw a chance to get a ring, and that's why all well and good. If you had a coaching staff, that could actually put you in position to win the game. <laughs> but my God, how many games do we keep losing by like four points or less? And up until Thanksgiving, this is now our second official blowout. <laughs> you know? And to Buffalo of all freaking teams. My God, this is pathetic. But nothing's going to change. <laughs> I mean, until our last game... If Black Monday comes, Jason Garrett and all that coaching staff are not going anywhere. So we're stuck. We might as well just get used to the mediocrity week by week. There's no point in having a heart attack on how these guys play. It's pointless. You can get up for them. You can promote them. You can love them. You can vlog them. You can talk about them. But 
not, they're not going to change anything unless they go on one hell of a run and Jason Garrett turns into Jimmy Johnson all of a sudden, nothing's going to change. So it is what it is. You know, I don't get hyped for the team anymore. I don't get let down by the team anymore. I just know that we're mediocre. Uh, we're going to stay mediocre until something changes. And now that's on Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones to make a change because it's obvious Jason Garrett will never change. Um, other observations I noticed uh, was uh, Dak Prescott. I am I wrong or, you know, I've seen it pretty much in all years past, even Tony Romo. They have the wristband with the play calling on it, the quarterback band or whatever they call it. And it's generally designed for the quarterback to, if he doesn't have communication from his sideline, he can call plays on the field on his own, especially in a hurry up situation. Um, why is it even the third string freaking quarterback in Detroit has a quarterback band and can run a two minute offense yet we have two minutes on the clock Right after two minute warning, you run a play and y'all stand around wasting 15 extra seconds trying to wait for the next call to get played, called in. Why? What the hell? What are you wasting time waiting for the sideline to give you a call when you should already have a play designed and go? And that's back to coaching. Because I'm sick and tired of seeing those plays where it's questionable. Did he catch a ball? Don't he catch a ball? Is it interference or not? You know, certain calls. And if you get a playoff, they can't review it. And yet, y'all's taking y'all sweet butt time to get down the field to get set to run the next play. They got all the time in the world to replay the freaking play. And then they call a review. And you generally 99% lose. For some reason, y'all have no sense of urgency that, oh my God, Amari Cooper looks like he didn't catch the pass. Gee, let's run a play so they can't review it. No, nah, we're just gonna take our sweet time, walk down the field, wait for the next play to get called in. Oh, darn, they already done reviewed it. Like, what, what, what? This is why Aaron Rodgers is great. This is why Tom Brady is great. They see what's going on on the field. They take control and say, oh my God, my guy might not have caught that. Let's run down the field and just spike the freaking ball so they can't review the play. Something, you know, and figure it out on second down. You don't even try. You just take your sweet times and then you see Garrett on the sideline just like, oh my God. I mean, it's the whole thing is just summed up when you saw the footage. You saw the game. Jason Garrett was literally sweating bullets. You saw it on the sideline. He's not standing next to anybody. Nobody's coming to talk to him. Nobody's helping him out. He's just roaming up and down the sideline, sweating bullets, eyes red, <laughs> wonder, just watching his career go down the drain. And when Jerry Jones gets up to walk out of his uh, suite and head towards the exits before the game is over, I don't care if y'all say Jason Garrett is okay. He's not okay. Jerry Jones is pissed. The only time in the past that man came down from them freaking suites to come back down to the field since like the Parcel days is if we were going to the playoffs or something and it was already locked up. That man doesn't leave the press, the, the his suite early for no reason. <laughs> to come down to the field unless there's a reason and you know he he had to talk to Garrett he had to give that man a mouthful because how as a coach you the head coach oversees everything you can put it on the assistants that uh, that's fine I mean that's their jobs but as a head coach if you're in practice and you see the depth and you see the guys on the depth not holding up their end of the bargain, why are they out here playing? And, uh, I, we always hate, uh, people hate us because we bring up the past, but the past is what needs to come back for us. Let's face it, Jimmy Johnson, Bill Parcells knew how to command men. If 
we sat up here and Connor goes down, Sullafilla comes in and he immediately blows up a play on us and gets us a turnover. You're sitting back on the bench. <laughs> You're not coming back out for the next series, at least. You might not come out for the rest of the game. You might be done for the team. He might cut you. That's the fear you need to put in these guys. These guys need to take accountability. Because I'm sitting here looking at the plays, and it's like once Connor went out, you just saw the interior of our offensive line just give way on freaking almost every pass play. Zolafila is just getting burned. Like he's never played a day in his life. Like, are you are you serious? Last year you were good. <laughs> this year you're a turnstile? What happened? That's coaching. <laughs> I mean, there's something mentally going on to where he's not getting something right now. Because the body is there, but the mind is just nowhere to be seen. So it's crazy, you know. And I have to sit up here and, you know, travel home from New Jersey passing them stinking Eagle Stadium the link and have to sit here and just take humble pie eat crow because you know I like to say go Cowboys I like to say let's get this win but in my honest opinion any given Sunday or Thursday we are not probably going to win not with this coaching staff not with the players not caring about actually going out here and doing anything or changing anything they can say in the press conferences all they want that they're frustrated but the only guys who are actually achieving anything are the guys who haven't even been here before. Bennett is disruptive stuff. Robert Quinn is the sack leader. <laughs> like, then your defensive line, Tristan Hill is a bust right now. What the hell is this kid doing here for? And we picked him over all the safeties and yet he can't even get back on the field right now? Jesus Christ. Coaching. <laughs> putting your trust in some of the wrong people man you need to put a fire in somebody's butt because nothing else is happening but that's just my opinion <laughs> unfortunately next thursday we now got to sit around and wait for the bears and go to chicago in weather <laughs> against a team that before they started screwing around and losing people thought they might have been the best in the nfc so they've touted their defense all season so you think their defense even with their offense with Trubisky in them they might actually beat us <laughs> you can't guarantee anything right now and Jesus it's Van Der Esch is sorely missed right now you can see it Connor Williams will be missed uh, Jesus it's a shame I mean, you can't even say that penalties killed us this time. It was just bad player execution and bad coaching. Bad special teams, <laughs> you know. And with, as my last video said, I'm tired of repeating myself over and over. I'm about to make almost a 20-minute video going to work about the same crap. <sighs> but it is what it is. We're all sick of it as fans. Other haters can love it, you know, seeing our downfall. I just don't want to hear nobody say that the Cowboys are not America's king team because y'all love to see us lose. We put up the most viewers per game. Y'all pay to come see us lose. <laughs> y'all pay to see it, talk about us after the game. Every media head wants to talk about us, but nobody gives a crap. Y'all saying Dak shouldn't get paid yet. Carson Wentz got paid, Jared Goff got paid, and they're not doing that great, but you don't talk about them. They got their money, and all they proved was nothing either. <laughs> Y'all want to say Carson Wentz was MVP before he got hurt? Well, he got hurt. That's the fact. <laughs> he didn't go to the Super Bowl. Nick Foles did. Y'all say Jared Goff. Yeah, he went to the Super Bowl. Great. Your running backs got you there, and Cooper Cup, and you see what you've done without them. Nothing. So don't say my quarterback cannot get paid ever again. I don't want to hear that from any talking head, any fan, nothing. I don't want to hear from anybody. Jack deserves his money. Shut up. Uh, Zeke needs to play up to his money.
but we are not giving him in spots where he needs to thrive. That's coaching. Uh, Tank Lawrence is trying double, triple teams. I mean, this is why Bennett and Quinn are getting where they are because he's taking all the heat. Uh, Jalen Smith is not living up to his money right now. I don't know. He's definitely regressed. Uh, Leo Collins got his money and nobody talks about him. That's good. <laughs> that means he's not screwing up on the offensive line. Uh, it's ridiculous. It is what it is. Another shortened Thanksgiving week of losses. Ten years, Jason Garrett. You have not won back-to-back -back Thanksgiving games in your career. That is you. You are mediocre. Your coaching's mediocre. And our team is going to stay mediocre with you. But that's my time. Thank you for sharing yours with me. Thanks again for liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting down below. And I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.